Hey there comrades, uh, Danny Chu here. So today we are going to talk about uh, the most difficult thing that we make in smart door land. And that is actually wigs. So uh, it may not look like it, but um, yeah, we actually spend uh, much more time developing wigs than anything else. Now the reason is, so this is a, um, so our bodies are made using a technique called slush casting. Uh, this is a slush cast mold. Okay, and basically what you do is you pour in the vinyl, you heat it in a vat, you cool it down, centrifugal unit, then another air chamber to get rid of the air bubbles and so on and so on, and then you pull it out and then uh, one of these pop out. And because we use a mold, most of these will look roughly the same. So this is the Kanata head over here. Okay, and um, for apparel items, so this is our Sequoia jacket over here, we have um, we've got patterns. Let me just grab some over here. It's like going all over the place. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so these are <coughs> uh, patterns which we use for our um, apparel items. And because we do use patterns, um, they are going to look um, very similar in um, like measurement and shape and, and so on and so on. They won't look exactly the same, but they will look very similar. And um, so for the apparel, we use patterns. Okay, let me put this over here. Better not lose these. And then for body parts, we use uh, molds over here. But for wigs, um, there's like none of that. We have to weigh the fibers and uh, we have to like, measure the length roughly and, um, and that's about it. So our wigs, um, they don't have a shape, um, they have a style. And um, there are some folks out there who um, they kind of like require their wigs to look um, exactly the same. Um, they want the wigs to look exactly the same as they see on the website. And um, I've done my best to set expectations that um, when people buy a wig, it's, uh, it's going to be um, very different um, from, well not very different, the style is going to be the same, uh, but it's not going to be exactly the same one as you see on the website. So they're all handmade uh, by human, and uh, which contributes to the um, what you call it, the handcrafted nature and the uniqueness of each wig. Okay, so not only are wigs the most um, difficult thing to make, they're the most difficult thing to um, actually put on. And there are a few things I like to go over um, when you first get your um, smart on, uh, things that you must know. Okay, so first of all, I like to talk about um, some of the tools I have. So if you'd like to come over here. Okay, let's have a look at some of our hair tools. So over here we've got a little box of um, hair clips, little small smart doll size, made by Y.S. Park. Uh, you can get these on Amazon, yeah, that's really cool. You've got some silicone spray that makes your hair much more easier to manage. Um, in the US you can get some, I um, uh, think they call it downy wrinkle remover. A um, pair of tweezers, um, a hairbrush over here, some clips, He-Man. Okay. So that's that over here. Now, what we're going to do next is, I need to introduce someone who I totally forgot, Fortitude. So Fortitude, she's on the GoPro cam today. So if you see the camera switching to her, her fish-eyed lens, uh, that's what it is. So that camera is actually there uh, for a fail safe, in case Alan, um, our cameraman, in case he like falls over, um, like he hurts himself. Um, the show must go on, right? Uh, he could be like, he could like walk into the table and he's like bleeding over here. And um, but the show must go on, and uh, he'll have to like wait. Uh, but um, Fortitude is over here to like make sure um, the show goes on. Is that right? So we're going to talk about um, um, bagging um, a wig over here. So this is PM Maple. This actually stands for Parting Mermaid Maple. Okay, and it comes in one of these. Um, I don't know what we call it, string bag. They call these kinchaku in Japanese. Okay, so let's open the bag over here. So a uh, great thing about our smart doll bags is that uh, they're all reusable. So um, you can put the wig back in over here. Uh, you can put your pack lunch in here as well. Um, not a good idea to put your wig and pack lunch in at the same time um, because your wig may end up smelling like what you've just eaten, maybe like a hamburger or something, and um, you may mistake it for a hamburger. And, um, but yeah, if you end up eating your wig instead of your hamburger, then your hamburger wouldn't look too good on your smart doll 
head. So um, be careful not to like mix them at the same time. So anyway, so um, let's have a closer look over here. So it's wrapped in this uh, net over here that helps protect it to a certain extent. So this again, um, you can like keep it so that when you want to like store your wigs again, um, you can um, just like put it back in just like so. This you can't really use it for anything. I'm trying to think of something. Um, you can try to use it as mask, but I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna help actually. And if I go out like this, um, <coughs> excuse me, I can't get off now. Bruh. I don't even make it arrested or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is not um, doesn't classify as any um, PPE standards at all. Um, so yeah, be careful with this. Anyway, so this wig over here, and you'll see that. Uh, what we do is we kind of like wrap it so that it's safe for uh, transport and then so obviously it's not going to look exactly like um, the photos on the website because it's um because it looks like this okay so what you do is you can you slowly undo it okay now there's a few things i need to like talk about um, in case you think oh god my wig's broken or uh, my wig is balding um, and um, so let me, let me go over some things so that you don't have any you know, of those aha moments so please come along now uh, please come closer so I'm going to remove this little bit of paper over here. All right, so if you have a look inside, you can see that it's, um, you can see all the stitching done by human. Now there are some folks out there, they kind of like want everything to be like neat rows, um, just like a computer chip. And um, that's, what not, that's what these wigs um, can't do right now. We can, we, unfortunately, we can't um, use robots to like make our stuff. Uh, we sent all our robots into the past and they were destroyed by some, some, some conner. And um, ever since then, we've had to like, use humans to make our stuff. Oh, God, humans. Um, anyway, so you may see um, some like pink marks over here. There's a pink mark over here, all right? And that's so that the person knows like where to start stitching and so on. Um, you may see little blotches of like something or another. And what this usually is, is actually silicone over here. Uh, because for like parting um, wigs over here, you've got some silicone over here and that enables you to have this like nice parting effect. Without that, then it's not gonna look um, fantastic at all. So, so that's what that is, okay? And um, on the edges over here, you've got some elastic, okay? So once upon a time, um, when I used to take my Mirai out without the elastic, without the elastic, then the wig would just go like I'm flying, uh, flying off into um, the abyss. Mirai is, well, she's a Star Trek fan, but she's not really keen on the Jean-Luc Picard um, look and feel. And um, so she like prefers to like have her wig attached to her head. So this is why we have the elastic over here. So as soon as you take it off the bag, um, when, you, when you start running your fingers through it, you may notice some tufts of hair um, falling out. Now that's completely normal. There's like over 30,000 um, strands of here. So if you like lose like a few small tufts, um, it, it's going to be okay. So no need to, um, no need to panic. So can I see any here? I think there's one over here. And yeah. So whenever you pull um, strands, try to pull it from the root, as close to the root as possible. Okay. Because if you pull it from here, then it's going to spring back and um, it'll leave this like a really crinkly um, strand, which um, would look really odd. Okay, another thing is uh, there may be little small strands like sticking up. So we try to move all, um, all of them before we ship them to you. Um, but um, like during transit, some of them may um, like um, peek out. And if you do see them, um, just use um, a pair of like tweezers like these. Okay. And uh, so these are especially for plucking stuff. Okay. And so if you lose, you, if you see the small one, then just um, grab it and then pack it off. Okay. Um, please be sure to use a clean one. You don't want to um, leave this at home near the toilet or um, definitely not near the toilet um, or in the, um, what do you call it, the bathroom sink because someone could like use this and they could you know, pluck something somewhere and um, you, you don't know what they've plucked with it. And uh, what could happen is that, you know, they've plucked their, their nose, for example, and um, they've plucked this 
nasal hair out and it's got something like um, attached to it and that's usually um, a golden nugget okay and um, if you then use that to pluck your doll's wig then you can get some like golden nuggets uh, which like accumulate over here and um, it's, it's gonna be like really really unpleasant I mean just imagine someone came up to you and they um, they went like this hmm? and then they kind of like wiped it on your head I mean you wouldn't really like that I mean I don't know um, you, you may like that um, I hear there's um What's it called? It's not Catch-22. There's, there's a rule on the internet. If, if it exists, there's a um, fetish for it. So, I don't know, you could be like one of those folks. Okay, we're gonna learn how to like put on the wigs. So, we've got um, Monday over here. She's one of my favorite girls. She's like absolutely so, so cute. Um, she's so cute that I'm gonna feel bad about her pulling her head off. But you need to pull the head off um, before you put the wigs on. So, I'm gonna pull off her current wig over here. Um, I've actually got <laughs> a, uh, a cinnamon head cap over here. Um, because the, um, they're designed to like have wigs worn on the head, so um, if you've got um, a different colour head cap, then it really doesn't matter. And like for my girls, they've got like a different colour um, head caps on the head. So you can try to like put this on like this, but it's going to be like really awkward. Um, I think the best thing to do is pull the head off, like so, okay, and then um, you rest the head on the the, some, the rim of the wig over here okay then you wiggle in the head like so okay and when you get to this moment over here you have to move like in slow motion just like the matrix like Keanu Reeves okay really really slowly and if you don't do this slowly there's a risk that the head will like go um, flying um, across the room it may like go out the window it may like um, like go through like someone's windshield and um, that car could end up um, in a not very um, nice state um, at all. So um, be very careful. Um, these could actually cause a road accident. So um, absolutely no joke at all. Okay, so I'm going to position the wig. So you can actually position the wig like so. I'm going to do this with the head on doll like this. Okay. All right. So. Um, the, what you call it, the parting is a bit too close to um, the eyes of here, so I think it looks a bit weird, so I'm going to move it up a little bit, okay? Now, folks, they like to have the parting in the middle, and if you uh, like it middle, you can like just like rotate the wig like so, okay? Um, her default parting is actually on the side, so I'm going to rotate the wig over to the side like this, okay? Still a little bit low, I'm going to position the parting line just a bit, um, a bit, a bit higher. And, um, and that's about it. Okay, so one thing to note over here is that, so sometimes you may see the, um, the wig cap showing through over here. So what you would do is you use your um, fingernails over here. So you'd actually pinch at the area. So if you see like, a little bit of net showing over here, for example, you'd pinch at it like this, okay? Then that uh, will enable the fibers to um, fluff up and um, cover um, those um, those patches. Alrighty. Okay, and I think um, I think she's um, looking quite good. Um, there is one thing I want to talk about. Um, I want to talk about these um, clips over here. Now, um, lately we are using lots of these parting wigs, and um, when you the the further you move this parting over to one side the more chance there is of um, the rest of the hair like covering the face. And when you're taking photos, it's gonna cover, um, cover the face up. So what you can do is you can actually use one of these clips over here, okay? Open it up like so, okay? And I'm going to tuck this bit underneath the wig like this. Push it back. Oh, I think and then that's out of the way and um, that's going to be like much more easier um, to like take photos you won't be like having a shadow cast on the face okay one useful thing to have handy is a hat like so uh, so we have like some hats or like a beanie um, you can actually put the hat on like this and then that will help keep the hair at bay especially when you're in a windy a national park and um, that's going to keep the hair outside um, 
it's going to keep like um, at bay and it'll enable you to like take photos uh, much more easier. It will also enable your smart dolls to enjoy the view uh, much more better as well. Okay, it's looking very cute indeed. Alrighty, um, what else is there to talk about? Um, okay, I'm going to talk about um, Mirai's wig over here. So Mirai's wig is a bit different. So um, we have, let me remove this hat. So these are like parting, uh, parting wigs over here. And then we have um, wigs with um, fringes over here. So these wigs actually take much more time to prepare because we have to like cut each and individual one um, on the side over here. We can't just um, like ship them out. Every one has to be like um, cut over here and styled on the sides here um, as well. So um, I'm going to put a new one on. She's been wearing this for like quite a bit. So this is um, MS Hazel. That stands for Medium Straight Hazel. Okay. And what we're going to do is, um, again, we're going to open the wig like so. So, okay, and pull Mirai's head off like this. Okay, and then the same thing applies. You hold the wig in your hand like so. Uh, rest the head on the rim. Wriggle the head in. Mm -hmm. Very very slow motion to like hold the head and pull the wig um, on like so. Okay, then head goes on the. Um, what do you call it, the neck peg. And um, so there's a few things I want to like um, adjust over here. So basically what you can do is um, you can tilt the wig left or right. So I prefer to ha have um, the wigs tilted. So I'm gonna tilt it right a bit like so. Okay, so that's out of um, her face. So some folks, they end up doing this, um, showing a bit too much forehead. I think that looks a bit weird. And then if you pull it down too much, you're gonna end up like this. So you really need to um, twist it around a bit. So if it's looking too low, you pull the back of the uh, wig like this. And if this, um, what do you call it? It's, it's got like a slight parting over here. If you don't like the position of where that is, then you can actually twist it over here. Twist this down a little bit. Um, but for Mirai, I would say it's, it's, about, it's about there. Okay, now if you have a look over here, you can see uh, you can see the um, the wig. What do you call it? The wig cap showing through ever so slightly, ever so slightly here. Can you see that? So if I open it up, you can kind of like see it over there. Okay, so um, that's absolutely normal. So what you do is you use your fingernails, okay, and you pinch at it, and then you'll be able to like um, cover that up. Straight out of the bag, the hair looks um, kind of flat. That's because it's been wrapped um, for uh, transit. What you can do is you can uh, push the top of the head like so to fluff up, fluff up the wig a little bit. And it looks like she's got like, a, like an electric shock. So speaking of electric shocks, so uh, when I was a kid, I had, um, had an electric shock once. There was this lamp and he didn't have a base because I, I took it off. I like, I like playing around with wires and stuff. And I took it off and I forgot I took off the, um, the base. And then I picked up this like surge of electricity just went through my body and he's oh, um, it's quite a shocking experience. So ever since then, when I do this, I get like sparks going out of my fingers. It's like, it's like really weird. Um, it hasn't really affected my life so far. Um, apart from when I go to the toilet, it's like oh. Um, so apart from that, it's, um, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know how, how useful this is, but anyway, I've only got like a few more minutes to talk about um, Demogorgons. Okay, so I love Stranger Things, and I'm sure that you love Stranger Things as well. So there are some folks, so this is tomorrow over here wearing the short Oceana wig. Um, so I had like somebody, they, um, they took the wig, and they opened it up like a, like a Demogorgon, like and um, they done this, and um, they said, "Hey, my my bald, my not my bald, <laughs> my um, my doll is bald." And um, I tried to explain that you know that's not the way. Um, you know, we love Stranger Things as well, but um, they're not. They don't have this Demogorgon compatible feature, and um, they're not supposed to be worn like this. So this particular wig, um, if it was filled to the brim with like strands, um, it's going to look like a, a car wash um, haircut. Um, and um, that's not really what we're going for. We do, we do want to do one, try one. Um, 
but not this time around. So this wig is not supposed to like look like that. So um, if you do need like a demo gorgon uh, like this, then I'm sure there's like other wigs on the market or like, other brands who can like serve you quite uh, well. Uh, but our wigs are not supposed to do that. So um, it's actually supposed to be worn um, like so. So if you come closer and um, have a look around, you can see that looks um, it looks absolutely fine. Okay, um, it's not supposed to have this. Um, Demogorgon um, look, but um, there are folks who kind of like try to pull bits out, saying, "Oh, my, my, my doll is bald," and um, it, it's not really supposed to. Um, it's not really supposed to do that. Anyway, okay, so that was tomorrow. Looking very cute and teen, uh, one of my favourite um, cocoa girls. Okay, I think that's about it. No, nope, and forgot one thing over here. So when you um, combing. Um, hair. So actually, I, I don't actually use this that much. I actually use my fingers over here. But regardless of whether you're using a comb or your fingers, um, you should comb from the bottom and slowly make your way upwards. Now the reason is, if you start combing from here, um, you'll you'll get stuck over here, and it'll get like tangled all the way around here, and um, you're going to end up um, like crying. So um, when you're trying to um, like run your fingers or like a comb through the hair, always start from the bottom. And then make your way up to the top over here. Again, if it does get um, all knotted, then use some, you can use an Illigard or some of that downy wrinkle thingy um, that you can get in on. So give it a spray. And, um, and just run your fingers through it. Okay. Um, that's about it. I'm going to leave you with Monday tea. Mirai over here. Tomorrow, Fortuitous and Alan. Thanks a lot, catch you later. Hmm?